United Health, as we reported, just out with its first quarter results. The healthcare giant reporting earnings of $3.04 a share on $55.2 billion in revenue. Both the profit and the revenue beat expectations. Johnson & Johnson and Goldman Sachs, also among the companies reporting before the open. Joining us now, the Wall Street Journal's global economics editor, John Helsenrath. John, good to see you. Thanks for weighing in here. You know, Morning, I was Maria. pretty struck when I realized that we're talking about 19% growth for the right. first quarter in terms of uh, S&P 500 earnings. Uh, you know, the, the numbers have gone up. We were expecting 17. Right. Now we're looking at 19% growth. It's a pretty good quarter. What are you looking at in terms of earnings? What's most important, uh, John? You know, what, what's, I, I'm looking at the, the, exactly those numbers that you mentioned. We started out a week ago saying 17. We're already at 19. And what's remarkable is that you know, you, you were just talking about Netflix. J.P. Morgan had blowout numbers. Uh, United Health is beating today. But the market is really having uh, trouble moving on these numbers. I think there's a couple reasons for that. One is expectations are already so high after the great run that the market had last year. And the other is all these jitters going on about trade and whether this global economic boom that we've got is going to be sustainable. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, the president wrote an op-ed this morning. Let's talk about that, uh, titled USA. It was in USA Today. He titles, America's economy is back and roaring and its people are winning. The president writes this op-ed in USA Today and writes this. This is the last year Americans will fill out outdated, complicated tax forms in the years ahead because I signed one of the largest tax cuts in history and the most sweeping tax reform in a generation. Many Americans will complete their taxes on a simple single sheet of paper. America's competitive edge has also been restored. We know that when American workers compete on a level playing field, American workers win. This coming as a new NBC Wall Street Journal poll, John, finds that limited support for the tax cuts is still in place. It's incre incredible that now you're looking at 36% of those people polled by the Journal and NBC News say it's, it was a bad idea. John, yeah. what do you make of this? Well, you know, I would say this is a good news, bad news situation. The, the, the most important part of the tax reform was really on the corporate side, bringing down corporate rates, which were very uncompetitive uh, globally. So the economy is, is on a good run right now. But the problem, which, of course, the president didn't address in his op-ed, is that we've got an element of debt-fueled growth. We're heading towards trillion-dollar deficits. And it might be that the American people see that, that they, that they, they see this uh, deficit-driven growth and the deficit-driven uh, tax cuts, and they worry if there's going to be a price to pay down the road. John, it's Kevin Kelly. What economic indicators are you looking at um, over the next week or so to give you any indication? Because I'm, I keep getting conflicting mixed signals on where we're going to end up the year on GDP growth, whether it's going to be 3%, 3.5%. We've got great retail sales, and then we've had choppy jobs numbers. Where, where are we going yeah. from here? Well, you know, the, the growth outlook is kind of tricky to, to puzzle out right now because the estimates are 3 percent. The IMF is going to be coming out with its estimates for global growth. I would expect them to be pretty good later today. Uh, but the first quarter looked pretty soft. Uh, you know, the Atlanta Fed just revised down its estimate to less than 2 percent for the first quarter. The first quarter is usually soft because of this time of year. The numbers are just kind of messy. But, uh, you know, the estimate is 3 percent. But right now, it doesn't look like it, it's interesting. It doesn't look like we started the year off on really great footing. As to what I'm looking at, I'm really looking at anything that, that's, that signals what's happening on the business investment front. You know, later this week, we're going to have industrial production numbers coming out. What really is going to make this economy run, if this, if this expansion is going to keep going another two, three years at good rates, is if business investment picks up. So we've got to keep looking for those numbers. And, and that's what has begun to pick up, John, no? I mean, that's why we're seeing some activity in animal spirits, because businesses have begun to put money back into the economy. Um, but, but we'll watch that in, in terms of sustainability. Look, John, we've got to get your take on the Fed. A lot of announcements yesterday from the yeah. president. The president announced his new Fed nominees, Columbia University economist and PIMCO advisor Richard Clarita as vice chairman of the Fed and Kansas banking regulator Michelle Bowman as governor. Your reaction yeah. to these new nominees? How does this change the makeup of the Fed, John? Well, I mean, what's really important here is that, you know, when the president, w w when he was a candidate, he wasn't afraid to bash the Fed. There were a lot of people who thought that he would come in and really transform the place. 
but he, he hasn't. Uh, he's really got a steady issue go his policies. You know, Rich Clarida, Jay Powell, John Williams, that's the kind of inner circle at the Fed now. They're pretty mainstream. Uh, well, Williams isn't even a Republican, but Powell and Clarida are pretty kind of down the line moderate Republicans. So we're not seeing a radically transformed Fed. It's a steady issue goes policy there.